instant pot recipe, we're going to be using ground turkey. We're making like a taco pasta. Found it on Pinterest. I'll link it for you down below. For the noodles, we're going to be using this black bean rotini. Just two cups of that. Some diced tomatoes. I like the fire roasted. Just extra flavor. Some tomato sauce. Um, it was so crowded at the grocery store. I just got the first one that I could reach and it was roasted garlic, which will be just fine. Gonna need some beef broth. I think it's a cup and three fourths cup. So we're just gonna use the bouillon to make beef broth. Taco seasoning, or you can do, you know, your own blend of seasoning. Do a little pepper for the ground turkey. And it said a cup and a half to two cups of cheese. Um, I'm just gonna use this. I feel like that's fine. The last couple of recipes I've made and followed cheese recommendations, I feel like it's really overkill. I know who am I, but we're just gonna use this and I think it will be plenty. Okay, first we're just gonna spray the Instant Pot with a little bit of olive oil. And we're going to saute the ground turkey, probably with just a little bit of salt and pepper to start. <laughs> God, <laughs> just plop it. Oh my gosh. That's how you gotta do it. Uh, okay, we should probably turn it on. Where's the saute? Oh yeah, there you go, saute. Okay, so we started by sauteing the ground turkey until it was cooked, and we just added salt, pepper, and once it was cooked, we dumped in the taco seasoning packet. Then we gave it a good stir, added in the other canned ingredients, and we measured out two cups of the pasta. If you wanna keep all of the liquid the same, um, add the same amount of broth and stuff, I think you could add more pasta, probably another cup, just because ours came out very saucy. Nonetheless, it was delicious and we loved it. So once we added in the broth, we put in the pasta and you only have to cook this for three minutes. Obviously your Instant Pot has to come to pressure first. Um, but yeah, it's done in three minutes and then you just top with cheese and it is so easy and delicious. Me and Morgan loved it and it's definitely a keeper for us. Let me know if you have tried black bean pasta. This was the only time that we've tried it and it was delicious. I think it's really perfect for a taco pasta. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm gonna stir it. It says to just layer the cheese on top and then let it sit for 10 minutes so the sauce is absorbed, but I feel like it needs to be stirred, so I'm gonna stir it first and then top it with cheese. So that is what it looks like all stirred up. This is about how much cheese it made. I would say it's probably about a cup. There we go. We're just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. So the sauce can absorb and the cheese melts. All right, 10 minutes has passed. This is how it looks. Pretty freaking delicious, honestly. This looks great. I'm just gonna serve it up and we'll do a little taste test. Okay, it's still very like saucy, but I mean, it looks amazing, truly. It looks delish. I'm gonna do a little parsley for the photo. Beautiful. I'm so excited. I know, I am too. We have never had the black bean pasta from Trader Joe's. It's our first recipe making it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's amazing. That is so good. Honestly, I was worried I wasn't going to like it. Yeah, like the, the black bean pot, it's not like overly it's, beany or whatever. Yeah. Like it doesn't taste just it like just it goes straight. so well yeah. with this. Honestly, I feel like it goes better than like a regular pasta would. But yeah, it doesn't 100%. really taste like beans. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's really good. 
Um, I have made a taco pasta before. I don't even think I ever put it on my channel because I didn't like it. It like turned out weird. Yeah. This is delicious though. Yeah, this is good. I'm obsessed. I think you could do less liquid though. At least like a cup and a half, honestly, or less. How much do we use? The recipe called for a cup and three fourths and it's like very saucy. Yeah, it's pretty saucy. I mean, I like it. Which is good. Kind of has like, gives it like a casserole vibe mm. a little bit. Yeah, I would say that. I think Delicious. It's I think it's perfect. Rating? I'm gonna go with 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's good. I, I would love to have this again. It's so good. And it's really, I mean, pretty easy. Yeah, there was, I mean, there was mm. nothing really hard about that. Mm -hmm. This is great. I love it. Mm. Okay. We'll yeah, see you in the next recipe. That's recipe. perfect. I love how your head is like mostly cut off because you're so tall. I know. I'm gonna have to browse next time. Mm. Okay, we're gonna go have dinner. See you in the next one. Okay, y'all, tonight we are doing a really super simple dinner. We've never done it like this before, but I saw it on Pinterest. So we're gonna layer some potatoes on the bottom of the Instant Pot, top it with some tilapia, um, and let it cook eight minutes and then quick release at the end. I'm gonna have just a little side salad. Um, I'm probably gonna use my own dressing and add some extra veggies like cucumber and tomato to this, but that is a super simple dinner. And quick, it's Monday. We've had some errands to do after work and we are ready to eat. Okay, this recipe honestly was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm still trying to get on the fish train. Sometimes seafood is just weird to me. I don't know, but I've really been loving salmon lately. We love tilapia and occasionally we have some shrimp. Um, but I actually am really excited that we tried this because it was so good and we'll definitely make it again. So we cut up the potatoes and while I did that, Morgan was seasoning our fish with the seafood blend by um, Chef Paul Prudhomme. He's awesome. We love all of his seasonings. So we seasoned it up really well. You can also use the blackened redfish seasoning on this by the same Chef Paul. Um, literally so good. So once we put everything in the Instant Pot and it was all seasoned, it came out really quickly and we just served it with a salad. Simple, easy dinner. Potatoes, we're gonna do a little bit of olive oil. This isn't, I don't think olive oil is in the recipe, but we're gonna add some. So the seasoning sticks. And of course we're going in with cavenders cause that's the only thing we use in this house. <laughs> It, it, it's the best on potatoes, it's though. It's so good, yeah. It works with other stuff. I think you can use it on chicken or whatever, but... Oh, it's okay. Oh, Go in there. No, it's okay. Go in there with Go your on, hands. I'm all in. You need any more oil? Um... So we good? No, I think it'll be fine. Okay. We're going to put a little broth, or not broth, water in here, too. It's the best on That's potatoes. It yeah. It's going to be delish. I'm going to push those to a flattened layer. Honestly, I'm doing this recipe by memory. So we're gonna do that. Um, let's give this thing a spray. So it doesn't stick. See, we're almost out of this. Okay, okay, even better, hopefully. So we're gonna layer Okay, so the original recipe also used um, frozen green beans and carrots. They said, I read the comments and they said broccoli and like zucchini wouldn't work. Um, it would just turn to mush. So use, you know, a sturdier vegetable. We're just gonna use potatoes because we're doing a different veggie on the side. But then you add one fourth cup of either water or vegetable broth. And she said to pour it over the fish and then let it drip to the potatoes. So there we go. We're going to put the lid on, on sealing, and we're going to pressure or do manual cook for eight minutes and then quick release and we'll be ready to eat. Ooh, it looks really good. Yes. Okay. I feel like this is awesome. This turned out so good. Can y'all see that? How freaking delicious does that look? I am pumped. So we're gonna get plated and I'll show you the final product.
All right, y'all. Sorry the lighting is bad. We're at the kitchen table, but this is the final product. It looks amazing. Potatoes are so delicious. This is my cute little side salad. I'm going to add oops, the Boathouse Farms Classic Ranch. Morgan, your rating? Yeah, that's a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. We love it. So good. I was a little bit nervous, not going to lie, about the tilapia over the potatoes, but it worked. I mean, it's amazing. I love it. Okay, y'all, so we are like mid-dinner and have decided that the tilapia is better in the oven. We like ours a little bit crispy, um, and I do feel like it's like, it's not dry, but the first piece I had was dry, so like the edges... It's a, it's a little dry. Get a little bit drier. I don't think you could cook it for less time though because the potatoes need to cook. Overall, great. I would still give it like an 8 out of 10. So give. I think it's worth giving it a shot. Yeah. But I would do the tilapia in the oven next time for sure. The, 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 um, the potatoes in there are awesome though. We love the potatoes. Would do the potatoes just it, by it's themselves. It's a completely different type of potato than if you did them like in the other kind in the mm -hmm. oven. But those are... They're, they're really amazing. good. Mm. Perfectly cooked. Yeah, if you're looking for like a crispy potato, do that in the oven. For these, it's like a awesome boiled potato. Mm -hmm. These are so good. With the water and then the seasonings, <coughs> it's yeah. like they cooked. I mean, a, a broth would be great too, but it is like we cooked them in a broth. They're so flavorful, yeah. delicious. Great. We love them. So that's the little update. Let me know if you give this one a try, and we'll see you in the next recipe. Bye. <music>about to whip up some chili this is actually my mom's chili recipe but i'm putting it in the instant pot so that will be new usually she just cooks it up on the stove so we're going to use two cans of chili beans two cans of diced tomatoes for chili one can of tomato sauce the 15 ounce normal size can pounded ground beef and it was supposed to be the mccormick chili packet but our hgb was out because we just had a snowstorm and everybody wanted chili um, so I bought the H-E-B brand Texas chili seasoning mix. Hopefully this is pretty similar. I'm also going to make some cornbread. They did not have the Jiffy OG cornbread, so I just got the Texas style one. Milk, actually don't have an egg to put in there, so I'm going to use vegetable oil and something else. I found it as a egg substitute for cornbread. So hopefully this turns out okay. Okay, so on the saute function, we're just going to brown up the ground beef. I added just a little bit of salt and pepper to mine. Once it's fully cooked, go ahead and add in all of your canned ingredients. If you have a lot of grease, um, you could drain that before you add everything in, but I used a lean ground beef and there wasn't much, so I just left it there. Dumped all the cans in, add your seasoning packet and cook it on manual pressure for 20 minutes. Do a quick release and you're ready to eat. Oh my gosh, y'all, I almost forgot to put in the seasoning. That would have been, oops, not good. A little flavorless, but put that in there. Okay, so I found online that you could sub one egg for a fourth cup of mayo, specifically in savory recipes like a cornbread. So I tried that. I just thought it was easier than the oil. Um, and it was like, I don't know, a baking soda. You had to mix some whatever. So I used the mayo and it worked so well. I honestly thought the cornbread was great. I wish I would have cooked it in a smaller dish, but really the nine by nine is as small as I have. So I just worked with it but loved it. This was actually a really great cornbread and it was delicious with the chili.
so good. And the cornbread it turned out really good, actually. I used the mayo trick and it turned out perfect. All right, that is the finished chili. It tastes pretty much ex exactly like my mom's. I can tell the seasoning's a little bit different, but overall, 10 out of 10. Love chili. Let me know what you serve your chili with. My um, dad always grew up with serving chili with peanut butter sandwich. That's like what his school did. So that's what we grew up on. Um, sounds kind of weird, but let me know. What do you serve chili with? Today we're doing cornbread, but if we had regular bread, guaranteed I would be having a peanut butter sandwich with a side of my chili.